Welcome to another video within a series of videos on optimal and robust control. In fact, through this video we are finally stepping into the control domain after a few introductory videos on basics of numerical optimization. Let me remind you that this course is given at Czech Technical University in Prague. Now I'll start with somewhat chatty introduction discussing what is actually the motivation for optimal control. The first obvious reason is of course that we want to get the best out of it, the best performance, the, guest, the best, the optimal control but the second uh, motivation can also be that even if we do not want to implement an optimal controller we may want to know the limits and finally even if we don't care about the optimality we may want to use optimization just to give us some reasonable controller that satisfies the constraints in order to formulate the control design problem as an optimization we need to specify or answer two questions. The first question is what will be the optimization criterion or optimal cost or performance index or whatever you call it. Uh, we can uh, naturally formulate the cost both in uh, or either in time domain or in frequency domain. Let's start with the time domain maybe a little bit more natural. So typically we formulate uh, our uh, cost functions uh, as uh, some function of, uh, of a response of signal to some typical input such as the step input. So if y is the output and let's say the input to the system is a step signal then the prototypical response could look like something like this. And then we can uh, identify here the overshoot which is a good candidate for minimization or we may want to minimize the rise time or we may want to minimize the settling time. The trouble with all these indicators is that uh, each one of them only covers one particular aspect. So in case you want to minimize the rise time, what could happen is that you will significantly deteriorate the uh, overshoot. And the other way around, if you want to minimize the overshoot, you will get very sluggish response and very uh, large rise time. Now, of course, you can always handle this by imposing constraints on the other characteristics or you can what you can also do is that you can uh, use uh, the so-called integral criteria after defining the regulation error as e you can define your optimization criterion as the integral of absolute value of uh, of error or integral of time weighted uh, absolute value of the error or integral of uh, squared uh, error these are even given some names in the literature such as integral of absolute error, integral of time times absolute error and integral of squared error. Now all these criteria only handle performance. You can of course uh, include uh, the uh, control aspects uh, in constraints or you can include them directly in the optimization criterion and thus realizing the trade-off between performance and control effort. The most popular among these is apparently uh, or, or the most popular is simply the one that you can see here where Q and R are uh, parameters which you use to express different preferences for the error in E and the error and the effort. Now uh, in frequency domain uh, you can express your requirements, uh, for instance, by considering a sensitivity function, one of the closed loop transfer functions, in particular its uh, amplitude frequency response. You can define the bandwidth that you would like to maximize, you can define the resonance peak that you would like to minimize, or you may want to make the attenuation at low frequencies largest. And the same objection as before holds here in that these individual uh, characteristics only cover one particular aspect. So if you want to now express something more, more global you can do it by introducing uh, frequency by frequency constraints on on these frequency uh, responses for instance uh, this upper bound on uh, closed loop sensitivity function we will label it as 1 over w and then the resulting closed loop transfer function, sensitive function, should look like this. Now you can verify by yourself that the this visually depicted condition can be expressed as the condition that supremum over all frequencies from a uh, magnitude frequency response of W times S should be less than 1, which makes it a perfect candidate for minimization. 
By the way, this uh, candidate for minimization is also compactly labeled as uh, H-infinity norm of W times S, a name, and this is called H-infinity norm of the system. And in fact, the concept of norm can also be uh, identified here in the time domain, where, for instance, the integral of square of the error can be seen to be the squared uh, two norm of the signal, or similarly, the integral of absolute error can be compactly labeled as uh, one norm of the error signal. And in fact, uh, the concept of norm can also be uh, identified in time domain, for instance, by considering input u, output y. The h-infinity norm can be shown to be seen as a worst case gain of uh, two norm of the in output with respect to the two norm of the input. But more on system norms later in the course. The other question that needs to be answered in order to use optimization as a procedure for control design is uh, what will be the optimization variables? Uh, there are two options. Either we will optimize over controllers or we will optimize over control signals. With the optimization over controllers, uh, we are running into troubles if we do not make any restriction here because the problem is then intractable. So we typically need to fix the structure and then we do optimization over the controller parameters, such as coefficients of a PID controller. There are two major issues here. One of them is that um, First, you will need to express uh, the optimization criterion, which we will label as J. Uh, in the course, uh, you will need to express it as a function of the optimization variables, PID, and typically, with the exception of very simplest linear systems, you cannot do it analytically, you will have to resort to numerical simulation. With all the unpleasant consequences, such as troubles to evaluate uh, first and second derivatives, there is a relatively recent contribution to this domain by means of so-called uh, algorithmic differentiation, which handles, which can handle this, but we will not cover it in this course, so look it up on your own. Uh, the, the other issue here is more serious, and that is that if you only want to minimize this or that characteristic, this is not enough. You will also have to impose additional constraint here, and that is closed-loop stability. And the trouble is that the set of stabilizing parameters of the controllers is typically non-convex, which renders the optimization uh, difficult. Uh, consider even just a linear system, say, system described by transfer function G with the denominator polynomial of the third uh, degree. In order to check its stability, you may invoke a Routh test, which will give you a uh, few functions which will be functions of the of the coefficients of the system and these functions will give you a set of inequalities these will be typically these f functions will be typically nonlinear functions of of the parameters of the system hence also parameters of the controller hence uh, and typically these constraints will be non convex so enough for enough for optimization over control parameters and let's now discuss briefly optimization over control signals in the time domain the control signals are essentially uh, functions. That means we will have to optimize over signals, which is something for which you are not yet ready. However, in the discrete time case, the signals are in fact uh, sequences of numbers, which, uh, which makes the optimization nice in the sense that the optimization variables are vectors and this is something that we can handle. So let's go for it in the next video.